from Microbe TV. This is Beyond the Noise, episode number 90, recorded on January 12th, 2026. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. Hello, Paul. Number 90, we approach 100 of Beyond the Noise. Wow, and I'm going to do 100 right there at the incubator. Well, that would be great. It's not a, well, you you're you're far away from Philly these days. So, see, 10 episodes left. That's 10 weeks, so that's the end of January sometime in March, I guess. I'll I'll be back in Philly in March. Okay, we'll do it. That would be great. I'll take you out for a bagel afterwards. <laughs> Sounds good. This is the video version of Paul's column on Substack called Beyond the Noise, cutting to the chase on important health topics. Today, we're going to talk about Paul's column called You've Got a Friend in Me. I remember that song, Paul. It was from Toy Story. I think it was Randy Newman did that song. That's right. And Randy always had a little off-key voice, right? But that was part of his style. Yeah, yeah, I remember that very well. All right, so let's start by having you tell us how has RFK Jr. impeded the uptake of influenza virus vaccine? So a couple days ago, uh, a CBS News reporter influenced or in interviewed RFK Jr., uh, during which time he said that um, the uh, Cochrane Collaborative, which is a UK-based health research organization, um, had found that the influenza vaccine does not prevent hospitalization and it does not prevent death in children. The Cochrane collaboration, which is kind of one of the ultimate arbiters of vaccine safety and clinical data, has done an extensive meta-review of the flu vaccine. And they found that there is no evidence that the flu vaccine prevents serious disease or that it prevents hospitalizations or death in children. Now, that wasn't what they found. Um, first of all, they published this about eight years ago, so it's an older study. Secondly, it was really a look at randomized uh, controlled trials of influenza vaccine, which were relatively small and did not have long follow-ups. So what they really concluded is they concluded that our data are not good enough to say whether this influenza vaccine prevented hospitalization or prevented death. That's what it really said. So he said, you know, that, that here this vaccine doesn't prevent hospitalization and death. And then he said the magic words. He said, I think children might be better off not getting the influenza vaccine. So it be. fewer people will get the flu vaccine. Well, that may be, and maybe that's a better thing. That's what he said. In the midst of this influenza epidemic, where this past year, 289 children died of influenza, and so far this year, since January 1st, 17 children have died of influenza. So um, it was a wholly irresponsible thing to say. So the Cochrane review is, is basically a meta-analysis of the literature, correct? Exactly right, yes. So they take papers and they go through them and they try and summarize uh, what they're saying, right? Right. But what they didn't do is they didn't look at the observational studies, which is really the best way to do this, to look um, retrospectively at children who did or didn't get the influenza vaccine, looking at large numbers of children over a longer period of time to see whether or not um, this vaccine is effective. And the CDC has shown, and I can, can read this to you, that in the 2023-2024 season, the influenza vaccine was 52 to 61 percent effective in preventing hospitalizations in children that in the 2024-2025 season, the influenza vaccine was 63 to 78% effective at preventing hospitalization in children. And in the 2025-2026 season, it was 67% effective at preventing hospitalization in children. So of course it works. Of course it prevents hospitalization in children. Nonetheless, there, your Secretary of Health and Human Services is standing up and using his considerable platform and saying basically children might be better off not getting a flu vaccine knowing the vaccine is safe and knowing the vaccine is effective. So he misrepresented the Cochrane study results. Yes, as he misrepresents studies all the time. He surely must know that children will die. As we see this year and last year, as you said, unvaccinated children die of influenza, correct? 
Correct. And in fact, a pretty bad year. I mean, we typically you see between 75 and 150 children die per year of influenza. This past year, it was close to 300. I mean, we really haven't seen a number that big since the 2009 swine flu pandemic. So um, it's been a bad year. And all the evidence so far is that this year will also be a bad year. So we need to make sure our children are vaccinated. So you cite some numbers about this flu season so far. Can you tell us about that? Right. So that's what I'm saying. The, the, um, the flu season last year was 289 cases, um, which is bigger than anything we've since, seen since the last flu pandemic. And this year already there are 17 children who have died of influenza. Influenza can kill you. Influenza is a bad disease. I remember when I was a medical student, one of the senior uh, uh, instructors said to me, uh, every medical student should get influenza so they can know what it feels like to really be sick. Mm. But even overall, this season has been more severe in terms of cases, right? That's right. The H3N2 strain, which is dominating, um, is, is not a perfect match for this vaccine, although this vaccine has been shown to protect against severe disease. So um, get your vaccine. And uh, you're right. This is a particularly bad year. He also canceled this wild to mild CDC flu vaccine campaign, right? That's the first thing he did when he became Secretary of Health and Human Services. And, and uh, that was the promotional campaign done by the CDC to try and make sure people could get the vaccines that could save their lives. I actually love that term, wild to mild, because it says exactly what this vaccine does. You're not trying to prevent all disease. You're not trying to prevent mild disease. You're just trying to prevent severe disease, i.e. wild disease, meaning hospitalization and death, which is true really for all short incubation period mucosal infections like flu, RSV, rotavirus. Yeah, I, I also thought it was a good slogan that really graphically says what it does, right? From wild right. to mild. And I think him taking it away is just inappropriate, but so is everything else he, he does. Why doesn't he say, I don't think anyone should get flu vaccine? Or to paraphrase him, I think everyone would be better off not getting flu vaccine. He sort of works at the edges. I mean, that would be a <laughs> a, a, um, a dramatic thing to say. So he, he sort of says that. I mean, when, when the measles, this past year we had... Uh, three deaths from measles. We've had more measles cases than, than we've seen in 33 years. So, so what does he say? He goes on national television and he says, measles vaccine causes blindness and deafness. Measles vaccine causes the same symptoms as measles. There are adverse events from the vaccine. It does cause deaths every year. It causes, it causes all the illnesses that measles itself cause encephalitis and blindness, et cetera. He goes further and he says natural measles can prevent autoimmune disease and cancer and heart disease. So he is on a war against vaccines and it's only going to get worse. And what scares me the most, Vincent, in all of this is when he starts to manipulate the vaccine injury compensation program. Because if he does that, I really believe these manufacturers could leave the vaccine business. And we have no vaccines because right now people are saying, oh, I'll get the vaccines that I know I need, but you may not be able to get them. I think that's his goal. Wow, that makes me pause. So <laughs> you uh, have a wonderful quote here. Let me, let me read it. Quote, when, when will someone in power finally stand up for the health of children in this country? When will they insist that this dangerously irresponsible man should step down as our nation's leading public health official? End quote. I think it's very powerful. And when will it happen? Uh, I, you know, I just, uh, it's hard to watch. I mean, we've heard a little bit from Cassidy, Senator Cassidy, that he's upset with RFK Jr. But where is the rest of Congress? Aren't they listening to what RFK is saying and realizing that his policies are going to lead to more disease? I don't think they care. I think all they care about is making sure that they don't under, uh, don't in any way undercut the president of the United States, who has appointed RFK Jr. as secretary of HHS. Also, Cassidy has been very disappointing. I mean, Cassidy, you know, was the key vote on the Senate Help Committee, Health Education and Labor Pension Committee, which was the second confirmation hearing. He could have voted no. That really would have changed things, but he didn't. 
So instead, uh, he said he had a, a, a deal with RFK Jr. that he would have, quote, an unprecedentedly close working relationship and that RFK Jr. had promised him that he wouldn't change ACIP recommendations, which he's done. He promised him that he wouldn't change, a, you know, the certain committees like the ACIP, which he's done. He said that he wouldn't change the website about, um, you know, autism not being a consequence of vaccines, which he's done. Mr. Kennedy um, and the administration uh, committed that he and I would have an unprecedentedly close collaborative working relationship if he is confirmed. He will maintain the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. CDC will not remove statements on their website pointing out that vaccines do not cause autism. So every time he crosses a line, what William Cassidy does, this Republican senator from Louisiana, is he writes an angry post on X. I mean, I can do that. You can do that. He's a U.S. <laughs> senator. Why don't you get off your butt and do something? You have power. Why don't you organize other Republican senators, some of whom are doctors, and walk into Donald Trump's office and say, this man is a danger to children's health? Because he says that in his X tweets. And he was just on uh, Fox uh, a, a couple days ago. And he said, you know, look how awful meningococcal disease is. I mean, meningococcal disease can cause you to lose limbs. You can be fine one minute with meningococcus and dead four hours later. What happens with meningococcal vaccine? Uh, uh, meningococcemia. You'll see children who lose their fingers. You'll see people whose legs are amputated. It's a rare disease, but when it happens, it is devastating. Why did he say that? Because RFK Jr. has just basically moved the meningococcal vaccine to just high risk groups, although anybody is at high risk, assuming that you breathe the air next to somebody who has meningococcus or share a beverage in college. So I, I just... Uh, find it really hard to watch him. Say, say, say what you need to say. Stand up for the health of America's children. So we're, we're complaining that Cassidy, as well as the rest of Congress, isn't doing anything. And that reminds you of a story about Superman, right? Right. There's, there's a wonderful documentary from 2010, and it's narrated by someone called Gregory Canada, who, who uh, it's talking really about, it's an indictment of the public education system in the United States, including sort of the difficulty in getting into charter schools. But he, he was, grew up in reduced circumstances, and he um, just bemoaned the fact that things were so difficult for him, and he said that he was just waiting for Superman to come save him, and was devastated to learn that Superman was a fictional character and that there was no one in power that was going to come help him. And that's kind of the way I feel about the United States Congress right now. I feel like they, too, are a fictional character. It didn't always used to be that way. Congress used to be bipartisan and they usually did the right thing. They used to be an independent branch of government. Well, that's that's what they were chartered to be. And according to the Constitution, which is the law of this country, that's the way they're supposed to be. But certain individuals are getting around that. What can what can people do about RFK and his lying? OK, here's what I here's I think there's three ways that RFK Jr. can be uh, called to task for his dangerously irresponsible pronouncements as Secretary of Health and Human Services. One, President Trump can step in and say, this is enough. We're having measles outbreaks, pertussis outbreaks, flu deaths. We have more tetanus over the last uh, year than we've had in 10 years. You have to step down. That's not going to happen. I think that President Trump has similar anti-vaccine views. The second possibility is that Congress steps forward. They have shown no capacity at all or interest in doing that. The third possibility, and this is possible, is that parents organize. Um, you know, I've been called by a U.S. senator and was told, see if you can sort of organize um, physicians to kind of have a march on Washington. So you can, we can say how much we um, are worried about the, th the events that are going on under this secretary of HHS. But I don't think that's the way to do it. Of course, doctors don't like this uh, and scientists don't like this. I think the best way to do it is to get a bipartisan group of parents to march on Washington and say, we're scared. We're scared of what's going on now. We're scared of this war on vaccines. Please, please don't put us in this position. Please ask this man to step down. I think, you know, they're voters. And, and if, they're, if they appear as a block, I think that could make a difference. But another way also is that the states can independently refuse to take his recommendations and medical societies can say this is what should be done, right? And that's happened. I mean, the American Academy of Pediatrics immediately stood up 
when he said he, RFK Jr., said that he didn't recommend the vaccine for healthy young children, the COVID vaccine, sorry. And the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology immediately stood up when RFK Jr. said he didn't recommend the COVID vaccine for healthy pregnant women. When RFK Jr. said that, that um, he was no longer recommending the rotavirus vaccine, routinely the American Academy of Pediatrics stood up and they're, they're going to stand up for the flu vaccine and have also. So they do, and I think states do, and state coalitions do. Mm -hmm. So I think medical and scientific uh, community has largely ignored the Advisory Committee for Immunization Practices and the CDC because they're not the ACIP or CDC anymore. They're just an extension of RFK Jr.'s Children's Health Defense. So they see that. But nonetheless, I've heard from a lot of pediatricians who said they're having more conversations than ever before, that people have heard about maybe they don't need, you know, a, a, a the mom doesn't need a maternal RSV vaccine or the baby doesn't need an RSV-specific monoclonal antibody or maybe the rotavirus vaccine isn't so important because that's what RFK Jr. has done. He's made it confusing. He's made it like vaccines are more optional than they really are, and, and that's his goal. So it really it rests on the pediatricians because they're the, the doctors who are going to be Im immunizing uh, young children, right? And they've, I think they've generally been good, but they certainly are, are dealing with much more doubt than yeah. they were previously, and this is doubt that's been created by RFK Jr. As we know, uh, RFK Jr. is not a doctor uh, of any kind. He's a lawyer. And he, in fact, said some time ago that you shouldn't take medical advice from him. So why is he then giving medical advice? I just wish when he said you shouldn't take medical advice from me, he meant it. But I don't think people should be taking advice, medical advice right. from me. But as it turns out, it was just another lie. <laughs> just another lie in a long string of lies from RFK Jr. We'll put a link to this column in the show notes so you can read it all yourself. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.